Do you want to start a three-on-three basketball league business and avoid some of the biggest mistakes that people make? Then you're in the right place. Hi, I'm Christy Hilly with Three on Three Hoops Hub. I have run over 400 three on three basketball leagues since 1997 with my company Midwest Three on Three. And the past few years, I've been helping hundreds of other people get their own three on three basketball leagues off the ground and have them be profitable by sharing our model and how we're doing things here in Minnesota. I've worked with hundreds of people the past few years and I've seen some mistakes that people make and I wanna share with you the three biggest mistakes that people are making so that you can avoid them. The first mistake has to do with promotion. Uh, one of the things people do is they don't give themselves enough time to promote their league. You're gonna to wanna to have at least three months to promote your league. So that means once you've gotten your website ready, your registrations ready, you've secured your facility, and you can start promoting your league, you wanna have a solid three months of time that you can be telling people about your league uh, before it actually starts. And all too often, I talk to people whose league is maybe in four weeks or six weeks from now, and they're just starting their promotion efforts, and I know already that it's not gonna go very well for them because I, I had three very busy children and my calendar was already filled up with their activities for the next month, you know, four weeks from now, six weeks from now. So you wanna be presenting your three on three league to people while their calendar is not already full of other activities. And you know, even if my son was available four weeks from now to sign up for a three on three league, Three on three is something where they need other people to play with. So if he called up his friend, the chances that his friend is also free four weeks from now is unlikely as well. So you really wanna make sure you're getting this opportunity presented to people while their calendar is still pretty clear. So three months of promotion time. The other um, problem that I see people have with their promotion efforts is they don't have enough people to email about their opportunities. So uh, how many people do you have on your email list that you can send out information about your league? Now, yep, there's all kinds of other things you can do. You can do flyers, you can do yard signs, yard signs, lots of other things for promoting. But the very best, most effective way to promote your league is with emails. So if you aren't maybe a coach that has an email list, maybe from camps that you've run, or um, maybe you're a trainer, and you have emails, that's great. But if you don't have those emails, well, how do you get started with this? And how do you build an email list? And one of the things that we do with almost all of our leagues is we work with what we call a co-promoter. A co-promoter tends to be, say, a varsity or a high school basketball program, the coach or the, the board members of the, the fundraising group for the high school team, or it might be like the local traveling team or traveling association for five on five. Those types of groups have the email addresses that you want. You want to be emailing the youth basketball players in your community. And oftentimes those groups are looking for ways to fundraise. And so what you want to do is set up some sort of a agreement that's a win-win for both sides where what you want that co-promoter to do is send some emails out to their database and you can give them the actual text, the information about your league to put in an email that they can send out and then you can make a donation to their program as part of a fundraiser. So it's a win-win uh, situation and all of our agreements with co-promoters look a little bit different because what you wanna do is sit down and have a chat with them about how this could be beneficial to them, okay, while you're trying to get emails out to people. So mistake number one, again, is in promotion, people don't give themselves enough time to promote their league where people actually have a, a free calendar where they could sign up for your league or they just don't have enough people to email. So that's where working with a co-promoting group can help you start building that email list. All right, let's move on to mistake number two. Mistake number two is I see people excluding potential people to sign up for their league. And they can do this in a number of different ways. Some of them are obvious and some of them are less obvious. So let's talk about how people exclude people from signing up. The first thing I see people do is they overprice their league. 
And many people are coming into the three on three league business or idea of doing this from maybe a trainer background or a trainer mindset. And if you're a trainer, a lot of times what you're doing is you are serving a small number of people who are paying a premium price. And we got to kind of flip that mindset for three on three basketball leagues, because what you really want is to have as many teams as possible sign up for your league because that makes it easier for you to build schedules and make sure teams are playing appropriate competition. So you'd rather have a, a, a bigger volume, more teams paying a lower price versus fewer teams playing, paying a higher price, if that makes sense. So when it comes time to price your league, you want to be really affordable for families and you want to make it a really easy yes because families are already spending so much money on activities for their kids. So if you can be something where they say, hey, that's a great deal to sign my kid up for this opportunity, that's going to bode really well for you and you're going to just have a lot more people saying yes and signing up and then you're going to be able to offer a better experience. Another way that people exclude people from signing up for their leagues is they market their leagues just to maybe elite basketball players or if they're doing a three-on-three -three tournament or something and they're just marketing it to the high level elite year-round type basketball players and we want those people in the leagues obviously but we also want to offer our leagues to people who are casual basketball players, maybe a different sports, their main sport, but they like to play basketball and they would sign up for your league if they knew about it. And we also want to open this up to the beginner basketball players, kids that are just trying basketball, or maybe they're not even very good at basketball, whatever. We want this to be open to all levels of players, which some people then worry about and they say, well, then we're going to have blowout games and it's not going to be a good experience. But this is where scheduling comes into play. When you schedule your league, you want to try to watch those matchups and make sure that you're having the right teams play each other. And one way that you can do that is you collect some information in your registration form. So let's say you have a seventh grade boys team sign up. You can have a question that asks them about their level of play. And so if they are elite A team kind of players, then you know who else you might match them up when you're scheduling, okay? And sometimes you schedule, if you have some beginning seventh graders and they're just new to basketball, maybe you're gonna schedule them against some sixth graders that are a little bit more experienced and see if you can't make those some good matchups. So scheduling is how you're gonna deal with having all those different levels of competition in your league. All right, so how else do people exclude um, people from their league and some of these are less obvious but here's a big one and I see this all the time I have people ask me to look at their registration form for their league and a really common mistake is on their registration form they require four players on a team it says sometimes like three players in a sub and I, I question that like why are you restricting it to four players what if a team has three players can they sign up what if it's a group of five friends or six friends or seven friends and they want to play together and you're saying that that's not okay, they can't have five players on a team, now they might not sign up. Um, and sometimes people will say their reason for that is to make sure everyone's getting good playing time or whatever, but the parents know this. If they're signing their player up uh, to be on a team of six, they know that that's less playing time than if there's three players on a team, but let them make that decision. Uh, you don't want to exclude people from signing up because they don't have this magical number of players on their team. Um, so three, four, five, six, seven. Sometimes we have teams that have seven players on a team. That's fine. That's fine. Um, and then another less obvious way I see people maybe turn people away from their league is they pre-advertise their divisions as being combined grade levels. So for example, they might have third and fourth grade boys for this division and fifth and sixth grade boys for this division. And I wouldn't pre-advertise that um, because if I am uh, a parent of a really good fourth grade boy and I see that they're combined with third graders, I already know that this isn't gonna be a great 
playing experience for my son, who is a really good player and now is going to be playing against beginning third graders, I probably am not going to sign him up. The other side of that is your beginning third graders aren't going to sign up for a league if they know they have to play really good fourth graders or whatever grades you're combining. So don't advertise it that way. I would have in the registration just have people sign up for a third grade boys, fourth grade boys, fifth grade boys. And then as you see what your your teams are in the registration and you're asking those questions about their level, I might have that really strong fourth grade boys team play against a fifth grade boys team. I will make that decision in scheduling, but I'm not going to pre-advertise how I'm going to combine those grades. Otherwise, you're going to exclude some people. Okay, so that's uh, mistake number two is excluding people from your league. And mistake number three, um, I know that if you're watching this video, there's a high chance, it's very likely that you are a coach of some sort of basketball. Um, So this might not sit right with you, but hear me out. So mistake number three is having coaches for your three-on-three league. I'm going to tell you, we don't do any coaches in our leagues, and this is what I recommend. Why do we not have coaches in our league? Well, by not having coaches, what you are offering kids is this opportunity opportunity to play basketball in a very fun, low-stress environment where they're not getting yelled at. It's not overly controlled. They're not being constantly told what they should be doing. They just get to play freely. Um, it's not over-structured. Kids get a chance to kind of develop some leadership skills in this situation where there isn't an adult telling them what to do. And it's a really safe environment for them to learn from their own mistakes. So no coaches really just gives them that free play opportunity that's missing right now in kids' basketball experiences. Not having coaches means you don't have to pay coaches. So this is good for your pricing your league low and you making more of a profit in the end if you don't have to pay coaches. It's also gonna remove the liability from you, so you don't have to maybe do background checks on coaches, or if the coach you know, has inappropriate behavior of some sort, all that liability you don't have to worry about if you don't have coaches. Also, if you have coaches, there's going to be some stress involved because you're gonna have to manage their behavior, um, make sure that they're they're doing a good job as coaching. It's just another thing for you to monitor. And you know that you're going to have parents complaining either about their coach or the opposing team's coach or whatever. And you're just going to be dealing with a lot of things that it's just unnecessary. Um, And then kind of piggybacking on our mistake number two of excluding people from signing up. What if you have a team that wants to sign up and they can't find a coach? Now they're not going to sign up. So that's going to just add to that mistake as well. Okay, so you want to offer something with your three on three league that's different than what's already out there. Kids already have so many opportunities to play five on five basketball with coaches, with practices, with the high stress, with winning prizes and things like that. How can you make your three on three offering something that's different than they're already doing, something that kids need, something that they really enjoy? and that families can afford to do with their kids. So those are some of the mistakes that I've seen people make. They kind of approach the three-on-three league idea really with a similar mindset to how five-on-five is already being done. So you got to think outside the the box a little bit. So I hope that um, these tips will help you avoid some of the common mistakes that I see when people are starting their three-on-three basketball league business. If you'd like to learn more about what we're doing with our three-on-three leagues and how we've built our business and how we're doing things, please join me in a free 90-minute training where I'm going to teach you the seven specific steps to running your own profitable three-on-three basketball league. So check out the link posted below. I'd love to help you get this going in your community by sharing our experience and, and our model and our system what's working for us. And I've I've used this to help so many others and I would love to help you too. So click on the link below, grab a spot in the training and I'll see you soon.